Multiverses is the hot new craze right now in the world of platform fighters. Tons of iconic Warner Brothers properties duking it out in a well-designed game is just fantastic. And of course, what fighting game would be complete without skins? And boy, does this game have skins with lots of hashtag epic references. And we're actually in a rather unique position with this game where we actually know about more skins than are currently in the game, either through data mining or from skins being available in the beta, then being shuffled around for the actual release. So for the sake of consistency for this video, we're going to talk about every skin that we know of right now that exists, whether it's been released or not. However, we won't be talking about any leaked characters or their leaked skins. So with that said, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's jump into Multiverse's Costume Origins. It feels appropriate to start this video off with Bugs Bunny, the leading man of the Looney Tunes. Bugs' first variant in Multiverse's is Hollywood Bugs, giving him sunglasses and a fancy robe. This variant comes from the 1947 short A Hair Grows in Manhattan, which features a famous Bugs Bunny explaining his rise to stardom while wearing this outfit. His next variant is Brunhilde Bugs. This variant originates from the 1957 short titled What's Opera, Doc? This short parodies many of Richard Wagner's operas, with Bugs himself dressing as Valkyrie Brunhilde in order to distract Elmer Fudd. Bugs' third variant is Maestro. This originates from the 1948 short Long Haired Hair, another musical-based cartoon. It features Bugs as a conductor, a persona used to mess with the singer, though the variant in multiverses doesn't have the wig. The final variant so far for Bugs Bunny is Toon Squad 96. This is based on the 1996 movie Space Jam starring Michael Jordan, and has Bugs wear the same uniforms that the Toon Squad wore during the film. Keeping with the Looney Tunes, the next character is the Tasmanian Devil. For his first variant, Taz has a skin called Beachcomber Taz, putting him in a straw hat and old-style bathing suit. This seems to be largely an original for multiverses, although putting Taz in such a vintage outfit could possibly be a nod to Taz's age, with his first appearance being back in 1954. Taz's other variant is also like Bugs, Toon Squad 96. This is also based on his appearance in the original Space Jam movie, though because Taz is so chaotic, his costume is all torn up. Taz has one final variant, named New Legacy. This is taken from Taz's updated uniform in Space Jam A New Legacy, hence the name of the skin. And that's it for Taz, and as insane as this next sentence seems, our next character to discuss is LeBron James. LeBron James? LeBron's appearance comes from his look in Space Jam 2, featuring an updated Toon Squad uniform. LeBron's first variant is Sheriff LeBron, which also comes from Space Jam 2, when LeBron and Bugs Bunny end up in the Wild West area of Toon World, and this is how he appears in that area. Finally, LeBron has another variant that comes from Space Jam 2, with this literally being titled, I'm Freakin' Robin. LeBron and Bugs both visit the DC Universe during the film, and while Bugs appears as Batman, LeBron appears as Robin, with the variant's title literally coming from LeBron's reaction to his costume. I'm Freakin' Robin? The newest character added to multiverses is Morty Smith from the Rick and Morty series, with his default variant being based on the main Morty that we see throughout the series. So far, Morty's only other variant is President Morty. This is actually a true variant, as he's actually Evil Morty, an alternate version of Morty from a parallel universe who came to be elected as President of the Citadel, a society created for versions of Rick and Morty from across infinite realities. Our next character is Arya Stark from the Game of Thrones universe. Arya's default appearance is based on her appearance towards the end of the Game of Thrones series, where she's older and has already become the deadly assassin that we know her as. She also has two variants. The first is called Water Dancer, where she wears a basic shirt and pants. This comes from Arya's appearance in Game of Thrones Season 1, Episode 3, titled Lord Snow, where she learns the sword fighting technique called the Water Dance from her teacher, Sirio Pharrell. Her other variant is simply called Dress, which puts her in a blue dress. This is designed after Arya's appearance in the very first episode of Game of Thrones, Winter is Coming, where she wears a similar blue dress. And now we're gonna dive into the Scooby-Doo universe with Scoob's best buddy, Norville Rogers, also known as Shaggy. Shaggy's first variant is Uncle Shagworthy. This isn't actually Shaggy in a costume, instead it's a completely unique character, Shaggy's uncle. He is a zillionaire who has only ever appeared in a single episode of the Scooby-Doo franchise, in Season 1, Episode 6 of the Scooby-Doo show, titled Scared A Lot in Camelot. Norville's next variant is called Black Belt, maintaining Shaggy's overall color scheme but doing so in a karate gi with a black belt, headband, and sparring gloves. 
Oh, and he also has a sick beard. This variant pays tribute to Chuck Norris, a super famous meme guy. Oh, and he also did some martial arts movies too, I guess. Shaggy's final variant is called Kung Fu Shaggy. This dresses him in a pair of yellow flame pants with matching sunglasses and some sausages as nunchucks. This, like the previous variant, is an homage to another martial arts actor, this time Bruce Lee. The name combines Lee's Kung Fu with Shaggy's obsession with food. Keeping in the Scooby-Doo universe, let's next talk about Velma Dinkley, the big brains behind Mystery Inc. Velma's first variant is Luau Velma, putting her in a Luau outfit with a flower in her hair and a lei around her neck. This appearance originates from Scooby-Doo Where Are You, Season 2, Episode 6, titled A Tiki Scare Is No Fair. Her second variant is a space variant. This originates from Scooby-Doo Moon Monster Madness, a direct-to-DVD movie where the gang goes to space. However, the devs of multiverses have taken their liberties with the design and colors for this costume to make it more Velma-y. And now we're going to take a quick detour to talk about another one-off character, the Iron Giant from the movie of the same name. Iron Giant's default design features a large letter S on his chest. This comes from the movie where Iron Giant rips an S off of a seafood sign and places it on his chest, emulating Superman. The first variant is his classic appearance, which is literally the same as his default, just without the S, and I kind of find it weird that this actually wasn't the default. His second variant is Beach Giant, which features Iron Giant in beach attire, complete with water wingies and an umbrella hat. Design-wise, this variant is completely original to multiverses. However, the inspiration for this skin comes from the cannonball scene in the movie, with the development team just building off of that concept. Our next fighter is the caped crusader, Batman. Batman's first variant is titled The Animated Series, and is a costume inspired by Batman's design from Batman The Animated Series, which first aired in 1992. This is the first time Kevin Conroy voiced Batman, and due to his performance, he would go on to voice Batman in countless other projects, including this very game. So it's a nice full circle kind of moment. Batman's other variant is Samurai. This is a variant based on the movie Batman Ninja, where Batman and the rest of Gotham are accidentally sent back to feudal Japan, and where Batman has a vaguely similar appearance to this costume. Our next hero is the last son of Krypton, Clark Kent or Kal-El, also known as Superman. Superman's first variant is the Black Lantern. The Black Lantern core is composed of dead characters reanimated by black power rings with the end goal of eliminating all life in the universe. During the Blackest Night event in the DC Comics, many of the superheroes have black rings seek them out, including Superman, and that design is what inspired this variant's appearance in multiverses. Superman's other variant is simply known as One Million. This is an all-gold version of Superman with a different symbol on his chest. This is Superman Prime, a version of Superman from the 853rd century that appeared in the DC One Million comic line. After outliving everyone he loves and passing on his responsibilities to his heir, Superman left Earth and traveled the cosmos, becoming a sort of god, before resting inside the sun for 15,000 years, becoming a direct living extension of it. And he's really shiny. The final DC hero in multiverses at the moment is Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's first variant is called Bloodlines, which strips her of the gold in her costume and makes it more red, blue, and silver. This appearance comes from Wonder Woman Bloodlines, a 2019 animated film where she dons this costume. Her other variant is the Golden Armor. This Golden Armor first appeared in the 1996 comic series Elseworlds Kingdom Come, where she wears it in order to fight some rogue new heroes. This armor also made an appearance in the 2020 film, Wonder Woman 1984, as Asteria's armor. And rounding out the current DC reps, we next have Harley Quinn, the Joker's right-hand lady. Her default variant in multiverses is primarily based on her most recent appearance as part of the DC Rebirth line of comics. Harley's first variant is titled Mad Love, where she appears in her Jester-style clothing. This is in fact Harley's original design used during her debut in Batman the Animated Series. She was originally a character invented purely for this cartoon, but she became so popular that she was eventually incorporated into the comic canon years later and has since become a household name. Harley's other variant is named Task Force X. This appearance comes from her portrayal by Margot Robbie in the 2021 film The Suicide Squad, not to be confused with just Suicide Squad. Now we have the most classic of duos, Tom and Jerry. For their first variant, Tom and Jerry dress up as detectives. This design comes from the 2014 Tom and Jerry Show's detective segments, where they both dress like this. The next variant is named Pirates Tom and Jerry. This comes from a 2006 direct-to-video movie titled Tom and Jerry Shiver Me Whiskers. 
The theme of the film is of course pirates, with both costumes making an appearance during the movie. Their third variant is Texas Tom and Jerry, with both dressed up as cowboys. This costume originates from the 1950 Tom and Jerry short Texas Tom, which takes place in the Wild West. And their final variant as of now is named Baker Street. This skin sees Tom dress up as Dr. John Watson and Jerry as Sherlock Holmes, taken from their appearances in the 2010 direct-to-video movie Tom and Jerry Meet Sherlock Holmes. The variant's name is a reference to Sherlock Holmes' address, 221B Baker Street. Next up, let's talk about Mr. Steven Universe, the protagonist of Steven Universe. Steven's first variant is Coach Steven, dressing him in a sweatband and sunglasses, a tank top, and flip-flops. This appearance comes from Season 1, Episode 20 of Steven Universe, which is likewise titled Coach Steven, where Steven is determined to help the group get stronger and wears these clothes while coordinating their workouts. Steven's other variant is called Tiger Millionaire. This design for Steven also comes from the show, from Season 1, Episode 9, also named Tiger Millionaire. The Tiger Millionaire is a persona that Steven takes on in order to take part in pro wrestling matches with Amethyst. Also from Steven Universe, we have Garnet, the leader of the Crystal Gems, the fusion of Ruby and Sapphire, and her design in multiverses is based on her current regeneration. Garnet's first variant is known as Flashback Garnet. This is an appearance Garnet had during a flashback to the 1980s in Season 1, Episode 48 of Steven Universe, Story for Steven. Her other variant is called First Fusion Garnet, and as you might guess comes from Garnet's appearance when Ruby and Sapphire fused for the very first time, first appearing in a flashback story in Season 2, Episode 22, The Answer. Moving away from Steven Universe, let's talk Adventure Time with the series' first rep, Finn the Human, who wields Scarlet in his default appearance. Finn's first variant is Pajama Finn, which is Finn in pajamas. These are the pajamas that he's portrayed in throughout the entire Adventure Time series. Finn's other variant is Fern the Human. Fern is the result of Finn's grass sword breaking the Finn sword, which resulted in the two merging into a single entity. Fern first appeared in Season 8, Episode 13, Reboot. And next we have Jake the Dog, a stretchy shapeshifter who goes on adventures with his best bud, Finn. Jake's first variant is Cake the Cat. Cake is the gender-swapped cat version of Jake created by the Ice King in a fanfiction that he wrote and read. Cake first appears in the episode Fiona and Cake, the ninth episode of Adventure Time's third season. Jake's other variant is Jake the Star Child, a strange five-eyed blue appearance. This is actually Jake's true form being part shapeshifter. This appearance first debuted in season 9, episode 9 of Adventure Time, Skyhooks 2. However, the name of the variant is taken from season 10, episode 10, which has the same name, where Jake meets his biological father. And the final character in the game so far is Multiverse's very own OC, Rain Dog, a reindeer dog hybrid. Rain Dog's first variant is named Battle, putting Rain Dog into armor that's based off of ancient Roman centurion armor. Next, we have Dragon, which is inspired by ancient Chinese dragon outfits. And lastly, we have Holiday, inspired by Christmas with a Santa hat, ornaments, and bows. And that is every costume for every character that is in a Multiverse's right now. But because this is an ongoing game, we're going to have a bunch more characters and a bunch more skins to talk about from future battle passes to just straight up being able to purchase them. So this won't be the only video in this series, there will presumably be more in the future as we get more content in the game. And now all that's left to do is wait for Rick Sanchez from the hit video game Fortnite. <laughs>